I just want to thank y'all for letting me come and talk to you. Can you hear me? I have a pretty big mouth, so I don't want to lose this. Uh, can you hear me back there? Oh, yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I am Barbara Damick, and I have been the district clerk since 1997. And I have to talk to you about my children, and I'm very proud of them. And, uh, you want me to wear them? No. <laughs> and I am truthfully 63 years old, but I only I started there when I was 12. <laughs> so I'm really excited about. I'm just going to go through this. Uh, um, I hate to say quickly, but I am because I want to. I kind of want to get my point across, and it's so it's so neat. Uh, you know, history so neat to me, and um, and of course we're living history every day. Every day is history. Um, I mean, you know, today our children are going to be saying, you know, back in the old days. This is a so, Can y'all hear me in the back, really? Yes. Okay. Okay. Speak up. Okay. I will. I can do it. Okay. All right. This is a walk through the porch records. It's from back, back there, into the future. So. Isn't that snappy? Okay. <laughs> all right. This is a history of Montgomery County found, found in all of our files. And it's historical archives for 176 years of history. Okay. 1788 to 1886. Here's Mr. Jesse Grimes. He was the first Chief Justice of Montgomery County. And I think he looks just like Steve McKeaton. How about that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was the signer of our Declaration of Independence, March 1836 and a senator and founding father of Grimes County, okay? Charles Stewart, is anybody from Montgomery? Okay, 1806 to 1885, signer of the Declaration of Independence, the first Secretary of State, District Attorney Pro Tem, earliest district clerk. You look a little alike. Designer of the home store flag. Okay. I think it's our sagging eyes. Okay. But the, folks, these are all things we found in our files. So, uh, just, okay, December 14th, 1837, Montgomery County, one of the first counties created by the Congress of the Republic of Texas following the Texas Revolution and signed by President Sam Houston. Okay, 1872, the railroad comes up. It opens its north and south operation through the county. With a new railroad lumbering, we got into the lumber business. It quickly developed. 1882, 45 sawmills were in operation. Did any of you relatives ever have sawmills or, or live by saw? Okay, all right. Okay, 1872 to 1920, the economy was great. I mean, they, I mean, she was prissy and the economy was good. She could buy all of her good dresses. The timber industry and logging community was were thriving. Workers receive one dollar to two fifty an hour, and I remind my people about that every day. <laughs> how, how, how blessed they are! Typically working six days a week, ten hours a day, and they did back then. They sure did. Very significant social issue during these years: inability of women to file for a divorce. That probably a good thing. And the different way cattle ownership was handled. Now the law no longer dictates to post a sign saying. I found a brown cow with black markings. Okay? None other historical differences? Uh, the way criminal punishments were held. Yeah, here they go right here. Sometimes, maybe we need to go back Women could not serve on juries. Only men could serve in the 1800s. 1889, the people voted to name Conroe as the county seat. Prosperity now is threatened and going on into 1900, 1920. Improper management of the local timber supply. 1930, the effects of the Great Depression in Montgomery County. It hit it drastically, forcing many of the mills to close. Our, I'm sure our, our parents are going to go 1931, the local comedy was in fact revived. All was discovered by George Strait, the Boy Scout camp. George Strait, within weeks the Conroe oil fields opened. 1931-1993, the field produced more than 770 million barrels of oil, laying $10 an acre. Oh, now man. it's four to 5,000 an acre, and the population grew from 2,500. What did it say? What did I say? Can you find an acre for fun? Right, that's true. <laughs> 
population, look at this, y'all, whenever the economy revived, I mean, we had an explosion. It grew from 2,500 to 10,000 in 30 days. People come to the and it's grown and grown, as we know. Okay, just to kind of put it in the proper perspective, uh, during the same time frame, 1932, 1934, Texas, Bonnie and Clyde didn't know the economy was bad. So they kept on robbing banks. <laughs> so uh, that's just to put it in a proper perspective. And I'm going to tell you one other thing about Bonnie and Clyde. The next slide, I'm going to show you something that's really going to be shocking. But if we would have known that many, many years ago, this many years ago, our whole nation would be different. Our whole nation would be different had we have known what this next slide is. Here we go. Oh no, Bill and Hillary were part of the game. <laughs> we would have been different. <laughs> Here we are, these old documents. They all wrote by candlelight in beautiful handwriting. We brought a book too, didn't we? If y'all want to look at that, it really is beautiful handwriting, but pages are crisp. Um, okay. Each page of the cases were handwritten. When duplicates were needed, a second handwritten copy was made. But now I can tell you, I came a long time ago to the clerk's office, and when I came there, we, these files were folded and triple it. Tri triple fold, 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 and tied with a string. And when people would come to get copies, you'd have to unfold that, make copies, and over the years they've deteriorated so badly, so badly that we just encourage people, don't touch them, don't touch them, from the oil in your hands, deteriorates them. So, um, okay, that's what they looked like back then. Here they are, 1800s. We have them all folded and tied with a string, and they're put together in bundles. And of course, the human environment. When I came here, I'll tell you where all these records were. When I walked into the office of district clerk, when I started, these files were all up on the fourth floor of the jail in the main courthouse. There was no air conditioning, nothing. Nothing was climatized. So, um, I mean, they, there's a lot of deterioration. It needs a lot of restoration. Look at there. Many, many of them that look just like that. Okay, so here we go. 1997, I came in office. This was the front of our office. When the public walks in, this was the front. What do I do and where do we start? I tell you what, I took some of the commissioners around back then and said, I just want to show you all where I'm going. It's going to take money to get where we need to be because it's real far behind. So one of them looked at me and went, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> he, did. he did. He's not no longer with us. It was Malcolm Purvis from Magnolia. <laughs> but he just looked at me and went, why in the world? <laughs> Okay, these, let me go back. All of these big boxes, have you heard of multi-litigation cases that are thousands and thousands of pieces of paper? That's where the, that's what these, all of these are. Uh, I think there's two cases there. And they just kind of pile them up around the desk. Here's uh, the rest of the front of the office. And I'm not exact, this is truly, this is my first day and I took pictures. My first day. Now, I knew it was there because I've been there too. Uh, here's the storage area upstairs. Um, this is what, this is the banker's boxes they stored them in. And I can remember, I was a courtroom clerk and when we pulled our docket, we were all responsible to set our docket, pull our docket, and we'd go upstairs. We had no men in the office then. And we would go upstairs and we would uh, have to pull those things down off of the top that would be stacked way up. And you know nobody ever had a back injury. No, never did, never did. But we'd have to pull them out to find our files. So that's the that's the shape it was in. Here's some more and just piled in boxes and these kind of boxes. You can see how yellow that box is and how long it's been there. And this is all down here boxes, just kind of people would kind of go boom and drop them and they bust open. Okay. This is my promise to the people, to all of you. When I came in, ran for office in 1990. Seven. It's supposed to be seven. I'm sorry. I actually ran in 96. And, and no, I didn't. I was appointed in 97. That's right. You're right. 1998, I ran. <laughs> You're right. I'm going to organize and manage the office, providing a positive and more efficient working environment for the staff. Lighten the workload through automation to move the cases through. 
implement new technology for all to work smarter and not harder. Okay, as Henry Ford said, now we must all focus and pull together as a team to see our vision become a masterpiece. And that's what we had to do and that was my, that was my whole focus for my office to be a team so we could get this done. Um, actually, I would kind of give out rewards to people and do, with new ideas and, um, uh, and, and use them. We, we tried to use them. I used to tell everybody, though, I want your ideas. I want, I want you to be creative. Give me your ideas, but don't get mad if I don't use them because I've already walked there and I know if it'll work or not. <laughs> so, but they were good. Give me the fastest, quickest way to get there. Modern technology, new phones, new computers, new software, new TV. We have to enter the data. You know, in these imaging systems, you enter the data, you scan it, the data goes in to the computer. Those computers can communicate all over the world now, as we know. We feel like we're in a modern time machine when we started moving. Okay? Now, 15,000 new suits plus, actually, we recounted today, and I believe that number is, just a bit different, it is like, 19,000 reopened. And let me explain that. JD knows what I'm talking about. But whenever a case is filed and, and it goes through all the process, going back and forth into the court, and whether the court makes the decision or the jury makes the decision, uh, it is closed out. There's a final judgment. That's it. The case is over with, unless it's appealed, unless it goes to an appeal. All right. Now, later on, especially in family cases, they're going to come in and they're mad. They're going to file a contempt action. They're going to file a motion to modify. Um, uh, anything to modify what was just done. And those are all like new suits because it starts the case all over again. Am I correct, Randy? I mean, all over again. All of this starts all over again. We're going to fight all over again. So um, now, and also criminal motion to revoke. And um, criminal motion to revoke. They've already been sentenced to probation. Um, and whatever they didn't meet the what they did they didn't meet the conditions of probation now they file a motion to revoke the state does and it goes to court to see if it's true if they're going to prison or what happens so uh, that's actually 19,000 since 1997 of those besides the now 15,000 and we switched when I came in and I came in 97 we had a great big old long files letter size files well, we had, uh, they had, Supreme Court had mandated letter size oh, several years, I think five years before, we had just never done it. And boy, we switched immediately from, like criminal was red, juvenile was green, uh, family yellow, civil white, um, the, the adoptions were brown. And so the judges were all used to those, they knew what you were gonna hand them. Well, we switched to folders like this, where this, Right here, this would say that's the year, this is a civil case, and that's the cause number of it. And that's a criminal case, red right there. And so, I put those little tags on them. Well, I had a couple of judges that threatened to mandate me to get me to switch back. <laughs> but I didn't, I held my ground. Uh, and that's a $500 saving for every thousand cases filed. So, uh, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of difference and a lot of money just using the letter size. Real quickly, there's my responsibilities are to keep records. Right now, we have seven district courts, five county courts at law, plus we have many specialty courts. Uh, those courts are drug court, CPS, attorney general court, child support, compliance court, DWI court, and sanctions court. Okay? And we're the financial officer. We are charged with the responsibility of collecting all of the fees, the fines, the payments for criminal payments and um, reporting all that to the auditor. And we go through lots of money, lots of money, especially paying on criminal fines. And uh, plus, whenever there's a, like a civil lawsuit, there's a car wreck and there's a minor injured, uh, in the judgment, the judge says, now, this minor gets $20,000 when they turn 18, okay? <laughs> I'm charged with responsibility to make sure it's invested for them. And I want you to know, when that child turns 18 years of age that day, if it's not on a weekend, 
They are up there to get their money, and they're going to buy a new car. <laughs> All of them, I'm going to buy a new car. <laughs> so, and we're a records management officer, keeping records available to the public, preserving them, and we dispose of them according to the records retention schedule from Austin. In a few minutes, you're going to see all these storage facilities, housing files. But we ha there's a records retention, and in district courts, in district clerk's office, the records retention is greater, they're longer, because of the seriousness of the offense. Um, for instance, I think family cases, 20 years we have to keep them. In uh, civil cases, they have different, depending on what kind of case it is. Criminal, same way. Assaults, you take the tape. You keep so long. Murderers, you keep half the murderers, you know. So everything has a retention schedule, and we have that set up in the computer that every year we'll pull up a list of files that we can destroy and we do that. Oh, and I'm the jury manager. I'm responsible for every district court in the state of Texas is responsible for the jury. Uh, we're responsible for how we call the jurors. Uh, the state says, you're in a jury wheel. Every one of us in Montgomery County, you're in a jury wheel. If we have a driver's license in Montgomery County, and if we're a registered voter, that's the way you're in the jury will. I'm responsible for making sure that jury will is correct, making sure the judges every week will tell us, my jury coordinator, how many uh, jurors they'd like. Um, we, my jury coordinator will order that many, have them come in on Mondays, and along the line is electronic jury. I'll tell you that, that started in March 2008. And we worked on it for a lot of years, trying to help jurors, trying to make it easier. And um, we were the second county in the state of Texas to implement electronic jury, where you can go online and qualify, and you can just, you can pick, if you go in there early enough, you can pick your court. That, I mean your date, I'm sorry, your date, uh -huh. date <laughs> and, uh, that you want to come in. But if that, after that's filled to capacity, then it will just assign you to a court for that week. Uh, it is awesome. It is a, really a, people absolutely love it. And if not, I have a jury assembly room every Monday morning that I qualify jurors in from the jury assembly and send them over to to uh, mix them in with the other jurors, the e, the e jurors. And no one knows which ones are yours and which ones come from the jury assembly. Okay, just want to show you a little bit. You saw the workstations earlier, what they look like, front office. Now, this is our central office. These workstations do all the work for the civil, criminal, family, tax, juvenile, attorney, not attorney general, that was messed up on my part, and CPS. This right here. I mean, that's everything. We follow the suits over there. We do all the work in the suits, because I can tell you, a lawsuit's filed, you have to issue a citation, notifying everybody, then they file an answer. And I always say the wheel starts turning, and that's a judicial wheel. And um, it goes back and forth into that court many, many, many times. Uh, the court ruling on motions, hearing motions. And finally, at some point, the judge will say, okay, okay, attorneys, parties, this is it. Not going to hear anymore. There's nothing else to hear. Now, it's not over that fast. It takes a long time. But uh, they will finally say, this is it. And normally, they'll set it for trial. And during that time, the judge will say, try to settle if you can. And, and I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, many of them set more settle, more cases settled than not. People don't believe that, but more settled than not, because there's no time to try that many jury trials. 15,000 cases wouldn't happen, no. So more of them settled than not. Okay, that's the front desk of the district court's office a long time ago. This is now. This is our office now. This is the new suit area where the new suits are filed. This is Child Support and Attorney General, one of the areas. I think they have two offices. This is the front service counters for the public. This is our service counter. This is the public research terminal in that air public area. This is our records retention area where we keep all the pending files. This is all the pending. And it goes way down. It's a great big room and it goes way down. And the beauty of this is, you can roll those files and it's really fun if somebody's in between you, you know, and, and you can say, sorry, I did not see you. you know, yeah. No, but they roll and it's wonderful, like pulling dockets. They're wonderful for pulling dockets because I'll show you in a minute a, a, a lectrieber we used to have and it had about 20 rows in it 
but it turns, you turn it like this, one person at a time, to pull it out. So it, it, it was really a burden. Okay, this is in my records retention area, same office area. This is a lot of our um, books that we've restored over here, though, pretty much. This one's a pretty red one we restored, but not the other Okay. Okay, child support attorney general again. Records preservation area. What we do in our office, we went to, through a training and we learned how to preserve them and keep the room climatized. We have one room. A lot of those old records, what we're doing, we're unfolding them very gently, very gently, and we are making an index, a running index. And we have a vendor who is um, restoring and preserving these records, these old, old records. And they just look absolutely beautiful. I have an old book here, and I have a new one where they preserve some. There, it's beautiful. So what we're going to do with those indexes is put them online. We're going to put them online so y'all can search through them and you know, come to the office. Okay, that's my records preservation room. Those are courtroom clerks. There's two sides of those desks there. I also put passport area up at the front. A new jury assembly room. It saves twelve thousand dollars a year. We paid the Crichton one thousand dollars a, um, uh, a month to use the Crichton on Mondays. So you know when they moved the auditor's office moved to the Sadler building, I went to Mr. Bosman and said, "I have a proposition for you. How about we make that into a jury assembly room and save a little money?" So you know we'll recoup our money in a year and from uh, you know for. Oh, uh, let's see. That's, okay, that was then. Then. Okay, that was storage. That's what I was showing. That's up in the storage, what I showed you earlier. Now, this is our storage area now. Isn't that pretty? There. Look at all those files. Uh, Y'all, these are those files. Those blue and red and brown files that they love so much. Okay. A banker's box holds about 2,530 documents. Depending on the size of each case, it'll hold about 20 or 30 files with about 85 pages. Each year, approximately 15,000 plus new cases are filed, times 85 pages, 1,260 pieces of paper. Remove the storage, 15,000 cases. Look at all those things, look at them. We didn't have room for all of them. Since 1990, 23 years, we've taken up 11,983 cubic foot of storage space. That doesn't seem like much. Okay, now we have to restore them. Okay, we've got to preserve and restore them. But where's the money? That held me back for a while. Okay, January 19, 2004, we received a, the legislature enacted a records management front fund for the district clerk's office. County clerk's offices have had them for a long time, and we finally, uh, the district clerk got one. So um, it preserves and restores civil and criminal big books, the big books that we have there. It's a separate fund. And from 1839 to date. Now, district court technology fund came in. It's a project for one project, effective 2009. Now. The use of it, you can only use it for this, preservation and restoration of case files from 1800s to 1999. And we have them all, all scanned and imaged in, in digital format from there forward. So uh, we're in the process of this, the court technology fund. Uh, we're preserving those. Um, I mean, lots of books, lots of paper, and um, not short on money either. <laughs> Okay, preservation brings the document from the old books. See these old books? Yeah. Preserved in the, see the red ones and the red ones right there. 29,384 29, documents from 1836 to 1999 so far. Now, <clears throat> we had an imaging system. I have several things. I didn't get it together enough, and I'm sorry I wasn't more organized. Um, I, poor Vicky. I said, no, Vicky, we need it. No, we need that, but I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I really had a list of things that I've done since I came into office. I have some printouts here, and it'll kind of tell you randomly what we've done since 1997 and our budget every year. And um, I didn't bring one up here. And I'm not going to go through all that, 
But the first year I came in, I uh, we put in electronic filing the first year. And uh, with electronic filing, with electronic filing, the case comes in, and the, every document thereafter, the court designates it as an e-file case. That's up to the court. And every piece of paper from then on out comes digital. The attorney just sends it to LexisNexis. That's who our vendor was. It still is now, but it won't be starting November. And, um, and they send it directly to us. It hits us the day they file it. The day they file it, it hits us. So let me tell you a little bit about this electronic file, what it has done for us. Okay, since 1997, we have sent through 1,750,000 pieces of paper with a few others. And it's 13 cents per piece of paper that saves on the cost of paper, envelope, stamp, and um, staff production. They're, um, uh, they're not having to work on a savings of $228,670. So that's just a little estimate. Um, you can just kind of look through here real quick, and it will show you uh, what we put in. Imaging system went in in, in 1998. They didn't have an imaging system. We brought that in, and we started scanning documents, and I thought, oh, man, I'm going to start at the back and start. No, you don't do that. You have to start then, right then. Mm -hmm. So um, all this back here just sat there for a while until we got these two months. So now uh, we have an imaging system. We have done, I, I just came in saying, you know what, girl? Let's, uh, this is what I want to do in the office. This is really what I want to do. I want to... When you're working smarter, not harder, here's the deal. Here's what I say. If there is 10 people that uses the same copier, put it in the middle. So they're not having to walk so far. They're not taking up time, production time. So I did things like that. I tried to organize the office like that. And and like uh, like courtroom courts, you'll see on here, we had many courts. And I only had, I didn't have a clerk for every court. And we had, um, and you'll see how many clerks is on there. What we did, I said, you know what? What we're going to do, we're going to start trying to do, is when one clerk is not in court, we're going to send that clerk to one court that's going on then, and we'll just rotate around, rotate around. And that, fun we functioned well with that for a little while until everything started picking up, and we had a lot, a lot, a lot of visiting judges. And um, to reduce the workload, they would run two or three cases at one time. I mean, my clerks were like, you just see a shadow on here, a shadow on here, a shadow on here. Well, it was a clerk then, she knows. And, uh, but uh, we made it, we did it, we did it until eventually we had to get some more. We were just stretched and thin. But I wanted to cross train everybody, and we did. Just about everybody in my office is cross trained. If somebody's out, we have somebody else that can pick up the slack. Like when a lawsuit's filed, I have a policy that all the service goes out on that lawsuit within three days. Three days. Now, it has slipped before when I didn't know it, mm -hmm. but it wasn't long, it was cured. Mm -hmm. But um, but three days turnarounds, because those so those cases can be moved. Um, team, teamwork, you know, that's what teamwork's about. Uh, I said, you know what? I tell people when I interview them, you know, this is what I consider a good attitude. You come in in the morning and you might be in a mood, you know, sit down for this and just work and don't take it out on anybody else. But, you know, whenever you ask somebody else, well, how are you today? And they go, fine. <laughs> well, you know they're not in a good mood, leave them alone. <laughs> so, and just mind your own business. But, you know, also in an organization, one bad apple spoils the whole thing. And it really does go like fire to an organization. So you know you're constantly, constantly trying to, we're under civil service, you know, and, and, and I tell you what, that's good and that's bad. I don't mind it. I never did. I never, I told my team leaders, you know, team leaders, you know, you always, what do you do? Document, document, document. And you document everything. So it didn't bother me a bit. Now, it really didn't, but you have to go by the civil service <coughs> guidelines. Write them up once, two, three, you know, and then correct for your out. Uh, so it, it, it's been great. It has been a fun time. It's still fun. 
and now we're coming, we just, we just, the whole county is getting a system, a new computer system called Odyssey, Tyler Odyssey. And um, we have been working on it now, inputting things for, how long have y'all been inputting, Melissa? Since February. I'm very, very proud. I, I would be, just be remiss if I didn't give her accolades. She and one other lady has carried this. And she, we did civil first, civil family tax. We inputted everything in there. You have to put it in before you, it works. And um, they were really, I mean, they were so on top of it. They were begging them, open up criminals so we can keep going. Open up criminals so we can keep going. So they finally opened it up for those. So uh, they've done a good job. Good job, Melissa. Job well done. Yes. And um, this is, I'm sorry, <coughs> Melissa's my office manager. Melissa. <laughs> It's straight it for assistant. And so and you'll even see some corrections on it. I apologize, but we just went pretty fast. So uh, they do a wonderful job for me and they lead um, with dignity and respect. And um, couldn't ask for a better team than I have. I can't 